Hey there, it's Brittany. Um, I'm back with another video. Um, so one of the things that I really developed a love for this year is artisan beads, and I love making beads myself. So I wanted to show you some of the projects that I'm working on. Um, right now they're kind of not finished, but I'm going to show you some of the things that I have on my bead table that I'm going to be testing out and then maybe I'll start um, producing them um, in different styles and shapes. So uh, the first thing I wanted to show you were some textured beads. One of the things I really really love is ceramics and right now I don't have room for a kiln um, or the time to learn uh, how to work a kiln but I loved ceramics so much so I'm trying to duplicate um, that look with polymer clay. So here are some um, baked beads or cured beads that I've made but I haven't decorated yet with um, colors. So they're some they're lentils almost. They're like coin beads actually, not lentils, but these all have a similar pattern on them. One side is debossed or embossed and one side is debossed. Um, so this side has the pattern um, raised and then this side has the pattern um, pushed in but like I said I'm going to paint these or, or patina them or do something I haven't decided what colors I want I haven't decided what I'm going to do with them one of my main favorite things is just having beads anyway so I might just make them into a strand so I can they can be inspiration um, I, I really love I've loved polymer clay for about a year now a little bit over a year and honestly everything is just endless with it so um, I'm really excited to to show you guys what I've been learning and what I'm going to keep continuing to do so later in this video you'll see some finished um, beads you'll see these finished I just don't know what I'm going to do with them at this point yet but I wanted to show you basically the bare the bare beads so um, I don't have my caliper near me I'm kind of yeah I don't have my caliper I don't know what size these are um, there might be like 22 millimeter I'm not sure um, I'll find it later on and, and let you know so those are the uh, beads uh, these are a little bit bigger but the same same idea these have leaves on them so monstera leaves on this one and you can see there's uh, I have to clean these up um, with because there's some lint in the clay that's really hard to work with white clay and um, I'm still learning so you have to work clean and sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do so then this one has some a different type of leaf and honestly half of the reason I love artisan beads so much is because they're not perfect so I just love how one differs from the the next um let me see is this a bead this is this is a bead so this goes with the first set of beads um, that I showed you this is a much larger bead and I'm going to make it into a pendant but I wanted a bead instead of having a, a hole so it'll hang like this sorry the glare there we go it'll hang like this or here's the other side actually I like this side better so I'll I don't know what what colors this is going to be if it's all one color if I'm going to do a few colors we'll see um, but I thought this was just so fun it's so large um, these are perfect for using for earrings this size and then accent beads and then this will be the focal and you can also do size in the middle as a bracelet bead um, focal uh, speaking of bracelet bead focal this is the kind of uh, size I was talking about for a bracelet however I did the um, the hole in the wrong direction so this one will become a pendant this one's got a really cool looking tiger who's just kind of chilling there um, I love I, this is gonna get cleaned up a little bit I have some sanding to do but he'll be probably um, ex accented with black paint and then maybe orange or whatever color the back is bare on this one so this would either be a pendant or I wouldn't put this on earrings there's a fingerprint but kind of just is my signature at this point um, this the hole goes from top to bottom so this one will probably go on a necklace and not a bracelet but I I, I was so excited to see one with uh, to make one with a tiger because while I'm not the hugest fan of cats I love the symbolism of tigers I love how they look I love their stripes and I love how regal they look um, and then another bracelet idea with the tiger is this bracelet bar 
I again need to sand it there are some rough edges but this is literally I just took these out of the oven last night right before I went to bed I have to sand like the hole here um, but I'm excited I think in one of my other haul videos you saw some a bracelet bar from a uh, an, another artist and um, these are very common with ceramic artists and I just love them I that I can make my own bracelet bars makes me so happy. So and you can make them any size, any size, any shape. So I, this is definitely something that I'll be continuing to make. And I might make kits with them. I don't think I'd offer just the bracelet bars by themselves, but um, depends on what peop, you know, the people want. So <laughs> maybe in the future I'll offer some kits with some bracelet bars or beads or whatever. Um, here is another pendant. This one does not have a hole at all. I really enjoy these little dragonflies. Um, this one, you can kind of tell I was just testing out what I wanted to do. Um, I think I'm going to make a hole up here. This one I'll definitely keep for myself because there are a couple air bubbles in there. It's just one sided. Um, so, but I, again, I love how these look like ceramics and I, I didn't have to go to a ceramic studio to make them. Although I wish I had a ceramic studio. Um, here's another one that will become a pendant. I'm going to put a hole in it. It's just um, like an embossed, cute little embossed circle. Um, again, I have to clean it up with some sanding, but it'll be really pretty. Um, the reason why I did so many of these is because I want to try a bunch of different techniques for painting them. Uh, I want to try like some watercolor techniques, some metallic techniques. Uh, the, the possibilities are endless. Um, I did a few leaf ones. So this was the first leaf one I did and it's actually a different color. It's a turquoise color and I think it's so cute. I think I'm just gonna keep it turquoise and um, fill in the embossed or debossed parts with black. So that'll be just like a little um, charm. You can use this for a small necklace, um, for if you had two, for earrings or um, a bracelet. This is not in there all the way I, ba I baked it with it in there but you polymer clay won't hold on to this unless it's like crooked in like if I made a crooked um, loop on the inside and it's really it, this is just a pin sticking in there so I'm gonna have to use some glue to keep that in after baking um, I made one in white this one I'm probably gonna try some different techniques with sorry there we go here's another leaf this one does not have a hook this one just has, um, this one's just waiting for paint. I, you can put a bail on the back of this, which I actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm probably gonna put a bail on the back of this. Um, you can put a bail on these, you can put a bake a bail into them, holes, put a hole here, whatever. Um, this one, okay, so you guys know, oh, here's another one that's got a leaf. This one I really like, very textured. It's like ferns, almost looks like a pine tree much larger this is about the size of the other focals I had guys the skies are, is the limit with these really um, I'm thinking actually I don't know I, I keep saying I'm thinking but I, I don't know maybe black with some green or turquoise or whatever those are the colors I tend to go to but you could also use gold like gold leaf in there that would be brilliant I love it um, and then I'm really loving sea theme things lately. So um, I made this one with a sea urchin. Love it. Love it. It's so cute. So cute. And then this one with a mermaid tail. Oh, I'm loving this so much. And the little mermaid scales are almost like little hearts. And then she's got little flowers on her flippers. So I can't wait to turn that one into a pendant. And then this one, I, out of all of them, is my favorite. This and the tiger are my favorite. The little seahorse. I really want to do maybe watercolors with purple and turquoise and green with this guy and lavender. So I'm super excited to um, kind of um, do some experimenting. So you'll, I'll come back. I might, I'm definitely going to be making more blanks um, and just playing around because this, I don't, I don't know. I just don't really have a huge attachment to any one style of jewelry making. I love trying it all. So when um, new things pop up for me, I kind of just go all in. So I've always been a huge fan of 
um, ceramics and I'm just so excited to be able to make stuff that looks like ceramic um, so stay tuned and I will let you I'll let you in on what else I, I do with these guys thanks okay I'm back um, I learned a lot while I was making these pieces and painting them and um, putting a finish on them some of them turned out really well and I think they all somewhat resemble um, ceramic however some look more like ceramic than others so I'll show you the things that um, didn't quite work and then some that I'll definitely be repeating the first one I want to show you and excuse my hands they have paint and patina all over them is this purple bead so this was one of the beads that I made um, and I decided to go with purple the purple looks nice I like th this side better it looks more ceramic um, I will be using this in something. I can kind of picture what I'm going to do with it, but uh, I don't think that I would use this paint again as a ceramic, faux ceramic look. It's kind of a luster paint. It's folk art. I um, can't remember the name of it, but it's got a sheen to it, and I just don't really love the effect that it created on the bead. However, I still think the bead looks great. It looks like an artisan bead. Um, I'm going to use it in a project. Next is this um, coin so I think um, I, I like how it turned out you can see it's shiny like ceramic it looks like ceramic in person however I just don't really love the effect that the patinas created on here I used vintage patinas um, because the the image was stamped in the middle um, some of the patina settled in the middle more than uh, towards the edges so I think I have to be more aware of that when I'm doing this in the future. Uh, I think I'll create uh, create a hole in this and use it on a necklace. And I made matching, I painted matching beads to go with this. Um, next was this little um, charm. So I did several different things to this. At first it was green and yellow and then I sanded off the patinas I used on it because I didn't like how they looked and then I used some acrylic paint um, so I, I do like the color I just don't like the, some of the yellow is still on there and some of the green is still on there and um, I, I definitely learned more about handling the paint on a um, uh, polymer clay piece with this one the backs of all of these are not finished um, I, I really wanted to get the uh, covering on them before my light ran out um, and this will just be on a necklace uh, so you won't be able to see the back either all right one piece that really uh, made me think were these the, this piece with the tiger on it so I actually really like how distressed this looks it looks like um, this was done with ceramic uh, paint and I really actually like how it turned out, but this guy gave me fits. Um, I like the the distressed, I sanded a little bit of the patinas off that I used. I used pink, yellow, and orange on this. Mostly orange is showing because of how many times I painted over it and changed my mind. Um, painting the guy in the, the tiger in the middle black was really um, a learning experience. And I'm still learning. I don't know if I really love the way it came out, but I'm definitely going to use this on a necklace because I, I, I can picture the necklace in my head and it's going to look so funky and so cool. So I really did end up liking this piece. It was just one that really frustrated me. So again, I didn't finish the back. Here's a piece that's kind of like this one, but I decided to paint the middle black on this one. I really like how the sea urchin turned out in black. This definitely remin is reminiscent of ceramics. I love it and I'm definitely gonna be using it. This is one that um, was a success in my book. Um, so here's a set of beads and I love how they turned out. They look ceramic. I will be doing this again this is using acrylic paints again you can see that all the acrylic paint and I've been scrubbing my hands for hours so um, I love how these turned out they look like ceramic um, they're glossy and I will be using them in a necklace or a bracelet I don't know but I will be using them do you think they look like ceramic because I definitely think they look like ceramic and then here are two um, here are the two monstera beads the leaf beads love how these turned out I used patinas on these Oops. 
Um, they definitely look like they've been hand painted uh, with ceramic. I think I would go a little lighter on my sealant on this one because it's not, you can't feel the pattern. Um, whereas on this side you can, and I, I like this look a little bit better. These are some of my favorites. And they go really well with this guy. But they also go well with this um, piece, which is my one of my favorites from the day. Um, it, it just turned out so beautifully. It's just so amazing. I, I love this. I want to recreate this. Um, it goes really well with these guys. It, I'm just in awe of this one. And it really, in person, if you can't tell, it really, really looks like ceramic. And I'm sorry we're losing a lot of light here, but just look at... I love how the, uh, the sealant I used filled in the um, recesses and uh, it's just so, I love how the patinas turned out on this guy. Makes me so happy and it looks so good with these coin beads. Um, this one turned out pretty good. Uh, I think I would change how I did the patina on this one so one side's pretty uh, darker turquoise and then this side's lighter so um, but still it looks like a ceramic coin went in person and I'm gonna be wire wrapping it into a necklace and then um, here's my little seahorse I, I really love how this turned out I love how it looks like um, watercolor um, but also ceramic at the same time. So I, I, I just, this is exactly what I was going for. I wanted green, purple, and blue, and I wanted them to bleed into each other and look like a um, watercolor painting. So I got what I wanted, and then I love the ceramic um, feel of it. And then last but not least, this little dragonfly guy, he I, really surprised me at how much I loved it. So I did purple to blue, and um, I took the relief uh, I reliefed the actual dragonflies by sanding off some of the patina and then I covered it and it looks like a ceramic um, medallion and then I put a and I even like the back like that looks like a nice watercolor painting um, and then I put on a silver color bale so I can hang it on a necklace without drilling it so all right those are the pieces um, I haven't decided what I'm really going to ma make with them yet, but I'm definitely going to be making something with these pieces right away. These are the ones that I'm just totally in love with, and I will be creating something. Hopefully, I'll be able to get another video up very soon. Being stuck in my apartment um, because of COVID-19, not that I have it, but I'm trying to do my part. I'm have an abundance of time so hopefully we can get something um, a new video going soon and let me know what you think I really love to hear and please like and subscribe thanks